This is another episode of the Flight Ringers podcast. I'm David King. That's Dan Spotswood. It's good to be here. Thank you. We are professional cartoonists, and we are Legion of Superheroes experts. This is Adventure Comics 305's Smallville Mail Sack. Super talk, talk, talk. I have a recording of that. You don't have to do it. Okay. (laughs) It sounds cool. Superb. Dear editor, superb is the word for the latest adventure comics. Everything is perfect. Uh, Legion of Superheroes was on the cover. It was perfect. With p- exceptional production by Curtis Swan. Right. How did they... Like, he didn't sign it. How did they ever know his name was... Where did they get the idea that his name was Curtis Swan? They must have called him that in the letters page sometime. Uh, Sunboy's Lost Power was the best of the series uh, thus far. Not an easy task since they've all been good. Paul Gambaccini, Westport, Connecticut. Anytime the issue is about uh, Sunboy having a hard time, I'm, I'm in. I wonder what issue this is. Superboy meets Steel Boy and Sunboy's Lost Power. The Legion's on the cover of that one, I think. The other one, we there's a there's a great one where uh, Sunboy gets like space madness or something from exhaustion, and he becomes like a villain. Starfinger? Yeah, no, he does not become Starfinger. He's he's still Sunboy, but they he opposes them. He's trying to destroy the Legion. Oh, I guess that sounds good. That's a good one. Superboy meets Steel Boy. The cover says the end of Superboy or Sunboy. I think it's three o two. There we go, three o two. I guess we're gonna have to start this over so I can say. <clears throat> Uh, This is Smallville Mail Sack, Adventure Comics 305, with letters regarding Adventure Comics 302, at least, to begin with. I don't know if they talk about other ones or not. Adventure Comics 302 and thereabouts. Mm -hmm. The editor says, it isn't every day we can get an A-OK from hard-boiled critic Paul Gambaccini. It's because he's in the mob? Is that the joke he's trying to make? Maybe Paul Gambaccini is a regular letter writer, always panning adventure comics and Superboy shenanigans. Or maybe they're like, say, making fun of the fact that he's a nobody. Like, oh, stop the uh, press. Paul Gambaccini said we need to do it different. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. But all he does is compliment them. Yeah, he's complimenting. <laughs> he's but extremely complimenting. But yeah, it's dicks. like, oh, thanks for the compliment, Mr. Big Shot. That means a lot coming from you, whoever you are. Whoever the fuck you are. Paul Gambaccini is so much more than just an eight-year-old writing a letter to a comic book. He's a really important guy. Check out this Wikipedia Ron Wenkart, Sepulveda, California. Dear editor, when will the Legion of Superheroes add a new member to their roles? See the next issue of Adventure Comics when we introduce Stone Boy, the Chlorophyll Kid, and others. <laughs> they become members of the Legion of Substitute Heroes. Matter Eater so, Land is about to pop up too. Yeah, this this the editor doesn't really answer his question. When will a new member be added to the roles? They don't know. Some substitute heroes next issue, though. I don't think they planned the, plan that far ahead back then because none of the, the older comics that I've, I've read from this time, they never, they always say, stay tuned for our, you're not going to want to miss our next issue, but they never tell you anything about it. Not even yeah. not the story title or what villain's coming back, anything. Well, he knows we've got substitute heroes in the next issue. And I think they must know they're going to bring back Lightning Lad sometime soon but yeah it maybe it's kind of just sketched out mm-hmm. the next one they're talking about um somebody's calling out the editor for giving a uh, false information about the ability of superboy and lana lang to marry mm-hmm. because um uh, evidently they, yeah evidently the editor said that they would be too young in any state of the united states to be married uh but this guy he's like well in las vegas uh 14 year old children can be married if they get um, oh, I thought they said something about um, parental permission, but they, they, he doesn't even say that. Lee A. Litch of Sunnyvale, California. Just the, that 14-year-olds in Las Vegas can get a marriage license, he says. Um, but the editor says that, uh, well, Superboy would have to show his birth certificate, which he doesn't have. Right. It blew up on his was, planet. Yeah, it blew up on Krypton. All Why the records that? were destroyed when Krypton blew up. So he could never marry Lois? I guess by the time he's an adult, he's probably forged uh, documents for himself. Be in the Fortress of Solitude. 
He had to break a law, right? To, to have any kind of life, Superman had to break some laws, or Clark Kent had to break some laws. Right. If he doesn't have a birth certificate, or how do you get a social security number without a birth certificate, or they're always, a doctor, they were always or, trying to thread that needle during this period. For a long time, because everyone has to be upright citizens, they they said that uh, Jonathan and Martha immediately dropped him off at the orphanage, but then turned around and adopted him. They didn't just take this kid and lie and say he was theirs yeah. be too dishonest i mean it would in a way like it would cost them more money but then if you did that mm -hmm. then he would have official documents with the government right mm -hmm. uh, i mean i don't know what happens when a baby is dropped off at at the uh, orphanage or the fire department or whatever mm -hmm. without any paperwork what do they do they just conjure up some and say you were born a week ago or you were born the day that we found you Later, they say, like, there was a long winter, like a, a bad winter, and they didn't get into town much. So everybody missed out on her being pregnant. Oh, she but, was, yeah, for nine months, they're snowed in. But the other thing, back at back then, um, they were like senior citizens when they found him, basically. So that probably wouldn't have flown. Um, she could have just said, I was taking... Um... In vitro or some hormones. Mm -hmm. What do they call that shit? I call, like that stuff that like Octomom or whatever. Well, that's like in vitro fertilization, isn't it? Oh, I thought there was like some kind of hormones or, or injections you can get that. Um, Maybe you're right. Makes you have like, you know, it's what makes people have twins and stuff like that. more. Right. Common, it releases like, too many. It's like a hormone that yeah. releases too many eggs at once. Birth supplements, baby batter. Oh, no. <laughs> that's horrific i remember one time on our facebook group mm -hmm. it, uh was pregnant and having a kid and she was talking about going on like the expectant mother message boards or the or the trying to get pregnant message boards and stuff and it took her a long time to learn that when they have wrote bb it was short for baby batter and there's there's some other ones too that were like these kind of lewd things and they also had an abbreviation or a code for them on and on it just all sounded really crazy you know right. and she was talking about how insane it was and how crazy the people sounded when they would write these messages out and how like desperate they all sounded to like get their husband to impregnate them and on and on it just sounded really bizarre the way she described it and you know I she's funny so it was maybe kind of played up a little bit those people are psychopaths personally like <laughs> when my wife that way when my wife and i decided to have a kid we we were like we'll try if it doesn't work out then it's fine some people are just so fucking intent on having a kid and having it be their biological child the things they 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 do the money they spend the fucking bizarre go for it because it's the easiest way to do it but if it doesn't work out there's like so many kids that could be adopted but they're no i must have my genes in this kid it's a really yeah weird. it's your bloodline dude right <laughs> yeah it's pretty insane uh, the next letter, Doug Seeley, Napa, California. Are these a lot of Californians are writing in? He's asking well, Californians. For a, huh? What'd you say? That's right. Fuck you guys. What's your problem, dude? He asked for a map of Smallville. And the editor says, you want it, you got it. We got a Smallville map. We got a Metropolis map. Um, he explains that Metropolis is uh, it's where Superboy moved to when he grew up to become Superman. Uh, but those two maps are going to be uh, later this year in Super 1 Superman magazine. My, my ass. Oh, no, you don't remember the, oh, those ever happening? I guess I can't really remember either. There's a map of Krypton, kind of. Yeah, way later. Tilson Van Breck, Miami, Florida. Will you please tell me how the members of the Legion of Superheroes are able to fly as far as I know only a few of them can really fly like Superboy? They all own friction-proof anti-gravity belts supplied to them in a previous story. He won't tell you which story it was, but it happened. Trust me. How does that work? Anyway? So I thought maybe they had propulsion in them somehow. Like, what? What's the bit? If they're just anti-gravity, then what did Monel? What's special about what Monel came up with? Like, it's more compact. Like. It doesn't need to be as bulky. Well, that must be part of it. Yeah, like the maybe the frictionless anti-gravity belt. Mm -hmm. It must be some other kind of technology that uses like electromagnetism or something. Right. Meanwhile, the element 152 that that uh, Legionnaire Lemon invented is uh, legit re repels, denies the effect of gravity. Yeah. And another thing, how come all these motherfuckers are walking around 
aren't walking around without broken fingers. Like it seems because like unless you're like, like super blind, if you're being suspended yeah. by your middle finger, that seems like uh or your uh, whichever finger it is, maybe that would start to hurt after a while. Getting yanked around, your whole all of your weight being supported by your finger. Well, I think after um you get used After to generations and generations of um, digital, <laughs> as in fingers, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just digital manipulation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Never mind. They have very strong uh, ring fingers in the 30th century, oh, right? From all the all the typing. Oh yeah, I didn't mean that was me thinking the, of typing. All the button pushing for all the machines that do all the labor. In the future, I, I was saying it was because there nobody's having sex no more. It's their fingers, right? Right. Letting their fingers do the walking. That would explain the ladies. You just do the tongue thing. I'm glad I didn't <laughs> see. I didn't catch all of that. <laughs> you just caught the rat tail end of it. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a. It's about Superboy, but it's a girl letter writer, Marie Rogers Lubach, Maine. Of all the types of Superboy stories you give us, the ones my girlfriends and I like the best are those yarns in which Lana Lang tries desperately to prove that Clark Kent is Superboy. I especially like the clever ways in which Lana tries to catch Clark red-handed and then even cleverer ways in which Clark is able to thwart her. How about more of this type? No, I don't want any more of those. It's like every one of them. <laughs> Give me a break. This seems like a like a genuinely age-appropriate fan, though, right? Yeah, probably. This person is not in college like the other writers that we're used to reading from this era. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that any of these letter writers are in college. Right. Those people. Like the guy who wrote in is like, writing how do it. they fly? I don't know how right. they fly. Right, right. Because it's probably more towards the end of the 60s and 70s. The editor says, stand by. Another one of these duels of wits between Lana and Clark is scheduled for the next issue of Adventure Comics. Mm -hmm. a, a meeting of the minds. Lana versus Clark. I'm sure some somebody much smarter than I I am is written like probably a book about the symbolism of Superman slash Superboy constantly hiding something from his significant other. Well he never has a significant other well his his from uh, women in main, his life. Yes. Yeah. Like you mean that he's gay. Possibly. He's got other girls on the side. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah like or maybe there's some secret? sort of longing in men to have something that their wives can't ruin. <laughs> <laughs> ruin <laughs> wow <laughs> dominate you know she'll watch this she will not <laughs> <laughs> i could write a 300 page graphic novel and she <laughs> she'd probably read like the first couple pages yeah, right. nice congratulations <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were like seven years in or something and she read one and said like, hey wait a minute is this real life is this me <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> how long have you been we've been together and this is all i do that's why right but it's kind of liberating actually i kind of get nervous when people i know read them so i don't want them like trying to decode things and figure out who's who and who i'm bitching about yeah i would just like it if you just have to read it you know yeah yeah i don't even need you to say anything i don't need to comment just yeah. the just the activity that you're showing some interest right know? Right. And like, I do stuff for you. Why don't you do <laughs> right. something for me? Like, this yeah. is an achievement of mine. You know what I mean? <laughs> Meager as it may be. It yeah, exactly. I know, like, I know <laughs> that everyone thinks it's stupid, but like, here, I spent a month working on this. What do you think? Uh -huh. Oh, huh? oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I go to great lengths not to show like my mom anything I do. But back when I was in the newspaper and I'd have strips. If she'd look at it in front of me, she'd always end it with a laugh, a fake laugh. And I'm mm -hmm. like, it wasn't even funny. It's like <laughs> dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, that's what she's got to do at the end. The obligate. Ob that's a comic, though, laugh. right? You just cry, right. laugh at them. Right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. That's why they'll never take off. They'll never be popular again. Yeah. But there's just not enough, uh, whatever, like the literacy to understand these things doesn't exist anymore. Right. Uh, I bet if you did like some crazy like far right anti vax shit, it could become popular. But you somehow tapped into that craziness. I think Scott Adams is doing that right now, probably. Maybe I don't know. I wonder what he is doing. I wonder what his the thing about those now. guys can't fucking read. <laughs> yeah, something that's all words, right? But I don't think they can understand a comic strip either. Mm. Like if it isn't just like whatever sh you know 
daily direct it is right i don't think you can understand that i don't think people it'd have to be just like barack obama fucking children or something like that i guess so yeah yeah like if it was an an action story but i think if it was very very obviously like a propaganda thing or is meant to deliver some information Mm -hmm. or satirical Nobody would get that. Nobody would understand that. Mm-hmm. And in fact, one time I remember at my job, what happened? Like the boss, we had three bosses and they're all like brothers or whatever. One of those those dudes, for some reason, he was reading a comic strip out loud to us in the room, in the print room. Uh-huh. This is the, the print shop. Yeah. And, you know, it's like the way he read it was like, um, here, let me find a Garfield strip and I'll read it out loud for the way he would <laughs> right. read it. He would read this comic strip. Mm-hmm. He'd be like, um, uh, okay, so uh, this is John, right? John, he's like, Garfield, wake up. You slept away the entire day. Mm-hmm. And then Garfield says, I did. This year is off to a good start. So that's how he reads the comic strip out loud to people. Mm-hmm. But I think that's how this guy reads everything. Like if you give him an, a newspaper article or God forbid he ever had to read a book. Mm. In his mind, that's how everything is said. He can't even, in his own mind, make acting sound natural or something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I think but that's how, to, I think, especially if you I think people are like that. Little, yeah. If you don't read ahead a little, then you don't get the context right or the tone of voice right. Right. But like, like this is a Garfield comic strip. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Each of these panels has like five words in it. Uh it's impossible not to read ahead right or am i just some kind of fucking super genius who can read four words ahead before i say them right and the characters are telegraphing there yeah exactly yeah they're drawings so i just think that's how i mean it it gave me the idea that there's if he does this there's probably whatever a million people in the united states who also read exactly that way and they they look at a comic strip and read it aloud and it sounds like that and they're like this is the dumbest piece of shit ever Mm -hmm. but it's actually you are dumb you know mr stupid ass reader who can't read uh uh, uh, the tiny sentence before you say it aloud or right uh, whatever you know whatever that problem is it just makes everything seem stupid and like he he'll read an article in the newspaper it's like a police officer in San Diego, <laughs> whatever, you know, like what murdered a black man. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like it's really weird, self-conscious way of reading things. And I don't know. It's like, you're worried. I guess reading aloud, it might be a different story, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't People understand. are just dumb as shit and they're getting dumber. When would someone even have an opportunity to do that anymore? Like that guy's not reading Garfield out loud these days. He might read he it out loud himself. That's what I think. From where? From Go oh, Comics or something? It might still be in the newspaper. You think he's reading Garfield? The I'm sure is in the newspaper. Yeah, old people. Reading... Oh yeah. He might actually be dead now. But <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm not hopefully someone was reading his obituary that way. He was right. a good man. <laughs> he never had a bad word to say about anyone. <laughs> There's one left, and I think it's... Let's uh, do it. It's... Uh, Wayne Stooge. <laughs> it's only one O. Iggy and the Wayne Stooges. Mm-hmm. Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Legion of Superheroes has turned out to be a grand series. However, in the avalanche of congratulations you've received, almost everyone has forgotten Bizarro, the wacky, pathetic, super idiot. Wait, is he talking about Dan Spotswood? Who used to amuse us... Fuck. Month after month with his zany antics. May I suggest, therefore, that you revive him by having apply for membership in the Legion. We're with you, but first we'll have to dream up a kooky initiation test for Bizarro to pass. Like, he'll have to make a uh, new element. Element negative zero or something like that. Well, they have an issue like that, right? Bizarro goes toe-to-toe with the Legion of Superheroes at some point, yeah. He doesn't try to join. Yeah, I don't really remember it. I have it. It's one of the adventure comics I got earliest in my collection. I personally I loved, remember. loved, loved those uh, John Ford Bizarro strips. Oh yeah, they're crazy. I think I, I remember like Tom Spurgeon saying like, uh, like this is the a gift comic that everyone should be giving to people. You know, like mm-hmm. the like the reprint. You know, that came yeah. out. Yeah, which I'm sure is out of print, you know, it is with the Jaime cover. Yeah. yeah, but it's like that's a that's a perfect, stupid comic book. Anyone could read that. And like it explains the concept in the first panel of every story. Yeah. Yeah. And it whatever you what little explanation needs to be explained. It's really yeah. fun. Yeah, it feels so almost dorky. like it could fit in like Mad Magazine of that. time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's kind of mind boggling is that like the 
these legion stories that everybody or a lot of people just think of as really just dull uh dc house style mm-hmm. for for eight-year-old comic strips like same people made those i know <laughs> those same insane team. bizarro comics in team it's weird i mean i like the legion but it's kind of like uh this funny irreverent stuff isn't working do something more like all the other books right i mean the legion comics are not quite like all the other books but they're yeah, yeah they're they're superhero stuff i guess yeah but yeah, I hesitate to say that they're dull, the adventure era ones, but they are yeah. kind of dull, especially compared to Bizarro and maybe even compared to, I don't know, like the, the other shit, like Batman or something. Call. I don't know. I can't know much about Batman from this era. Is it still well, it, Moldoff? It's probably I, pretty good. I, I think so. Yeah, it looks more dynamic, like like when you think of those like late the 50s, Batmans 60s. And... Yeah, that's what I was about to say, the rainbow Batmans. Those are really like good. A, those are really good. Those are like my favorite Batman comics. I guess really the kookiest ones are probably more in the 50s, huh? Like the stuff that they took, they're making fun of in the TV show is earlier mm-hmm. than the Legion comics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would have been nice if they could have somehow kept Jerry Siegel and Fort for doing some bizarro comics. And I think they maybe overlapped a tiny bit. Like they maybe did a couple more, but I'm not sure. That would have been awesome. Yeah. To Superboy reprints. Yeah, just put in a fucking new bizarro comic by Siegel instead of firing him. Right, right. Uh there's <laughs> one more letter Fort. from <laughs> Yeah, he killed John Fort. <laughs> there's there's one more letter. I thought we were done. <laughs> Abraham Lobson's Waco, Texas. Dear editor, will you ever tell us how Ma and Pa Kent died? The editor says the tragic story of how the Kents passed away and of how Superboy thought he was responsible for their death is now being prepared. As soon as we schedule it for publication, we'll announce it in our Superman family of magazines. Did they ever publish that story? Probably dozens of times. Different each time, right? I guess like a, so. A lot of variations. But it's like, what happens? Is the uh, special kind of kryptonite kill them? Or do they? does he take yeah. them to the future and they age? Or what happens? I don't remember ever reading this. I know they die. There's one I feel like, like I saw... They're I, like poisoned I, by something. I think he gave them... Maybe he did it. Like he gave them... Maybe it was a kryptonite or like a piece of a comet or something. And it, it made them younger temporarily. But then they then they uh, were both on their deathbed simultaneously. Yeah. Well, see, when I was... I was trying to... Um, oh, I was making a thumbnail for YouTube. And I wanted to find the 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 young version of the, the Kents. And then mm-hmm. put it side by side with the old version of the Kents. You know? Because mm-hmm. we were talking about it in that video... Mm-hmm. about the time that the stupid uh, other dimensional TV producer uh, gave them a serum to make them younger because his show needed younger leads on it. Uh, yeah, didn't and, they, like and, the actors changed or something like that? No, his, the, the stupid guy in the other dimension was using uh, his uh, like drone cam footage of the Kents as his TV show. It was our reality, but he was saying it's a scripted right. TV show in his world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his sponsors and producers liked it, except for this one thing. These people are too old. So mm-hmm. he, instead of just like filming some other family, he youngifies them uh-huh. and um, goes on from there or whatever. He gets disgraced, but they stay young. Yeah. Let's see, I was looking around and trying to find some imagery. And there was like this side by side photo or side by side scans of uh the original an original superboy story and the reprint story from after they got their ages reduced Mm -hmm. where somebody had like taken this old superboy comic with the kents dying on their deathbeds and in the newer version they just pasted up the young kent faces Oh, over these people dying in their deathbeds. And I don't know if that story they actually was the one where they actually die and they explain where they how they died or what. I don't know. I've never read it. I just remember that that kind of weird alteration uh, publishing thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they ever killed them like contemporaneously because then Superboy's done. It'd be like the last Superboy story. Right. He wouldn't have any parents. What does he do? Is that like, do they die? And then he's like, I guess I'm a grown man now. I've lost my virginity. I've uh, killed a bunch of people, and now my parents are dead. I guess I am a man. I am 
uh, 19 and a half years old, I'm going to go to Metropolis and become Superman. I mean, I guess that would be a good last issue, but I don't think they've ever actually done that. It's always been like a Superman flashback or maybe maybe like that Missing Years series. Yeah, but that was in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. Here in 1963 or whatever this is. Uh, I'm curious, but not that curious. I mean, unless they did a time jump and jump back, I guess. Jumped back. Like jumped forward to when he di- when they die, but then jumped back to where they were alive again the next issue. Because they were around. They were around like in the like the 80s series with the like the Schaffenberger. The Schaffenberger. Um, oh, oh right. Boy. And they were the younger version in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think they kind of over time, they kind of split the difference a little bit. Like maybe they were wearing glasses again, but they yeah. were, you know, brown hair. They weren't, right. They weren't like 70 years old or whatever. Like they were like a sexy 70. Right. Like I a 70 year old from 2023. Name. It's weird to me. I, I guess John Byrne did it as an homage, and maybe it makes more sense if they're still alive that they would be old that age. But it is sort of weird that they're the same age when he's an adult as they were when he was a kid. They don't yeah, look so younger. Did John Byrne have both parents alive mm-hmm. in Superman? He did. He eliminated Superboy, of course, which pissed a lot of people off and fucked up the Legion. But he incorporated all that Superboy mythology directly into the superman book whereas yeah. before it was very separate but mm-hmm. then he he folded pete ross and lana lang into the regular superman book he put i guess lana had shown up maybe she eventually becomes a kind of a big player in metropolis in the 70s right, right. um yeah and he, he brought the parents the parents were pretty much regulars in the book and they were you know exactly the way kurt swan drew them back in the right yeah, there was that whole uh, World of Smallville miniseries, right? Where it showed them young. I think even Shaping oh, yeah. through that. That sounds right. Your guy drew a Lois Lane comic. You have it. A guy with a cool my, name. He's got a cool... Guy? Yeah, I call him your guy because you're always, you're the only guy I ever hear talking about him. But uh, Gray Morrow. Gray Morrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just sounds oh, like you know a, who... a theatrical name, like a like an author's name or something. Mindy Newell wrote that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mindy Newell. Of, uh, like all she ever did was that Lois Lane and some Legion stuff, I think. I don't some know, DC Challenge did. stuff. Oh, yeah. She did. DC more. Challenge, huh? Yeah. Dude, she she went on to do other stuff, right? I don't really know. I can't remember. Amethyst. Actually, that's the most recent thing I have read by her is the Amethyst miniseries. Is that recent? No. <laughs> like 1987 with Keith Giffen as a Legion tie-in. So it's just more Legion comics that she wrote. Um, Maybe someday we'll find out how the Kents really did a bunch of Catwoman passed stuff. away. That's the letters page for Adventure Comics 305. I did it, I did it See again. See you in 30 days, Legionnaires. Long live the Legion. All right, we're done with yes. that. You're free. You can talk about whatever dumb bullshit you want. <laughs>